Hey folks, so let's go ahead and get started here. A few months ago, Handheld Legend posted this blog post um, regarding their Clean Juice uh, Game Boy battery pack that they've been partnering with Retro 6 for um, and compared it to Retro Modding's Game Boy Advance battery pack. And the whole article just reads like propaganda to me. It just quite frankly left a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't see anything in the article that outright seemed like um, false information other than perhaps these run times here, uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that part. But I mean, look at this. If you've got a Game Boy Advance and it's modded with one of the popular Power Hungry IPS display mods, you need the Retro 6 slash HHL Clean Juice GBA. Like, uh, that's just... Oh, that's so disgusting reading that. Uh, but anyway, this was a few months ago. For context, it's August 6th today, and this was posted on May 29th. Uh, but anyway, relatively recently, um, about a month ago, uh, Retro Modding had reached out to me, and I guess they had just seen some of my other battery modding videos where I would, you know, I was trying to get the maximum runtime for uh, Game Boy Advance SP, or, you know, maybe they heard that I was working on something for the micro. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they reached out to me and wanted to see if I was interested in testing out their battery mod. So here we go. I have Retro Modding's battery mod and Retro 6's battery mod. Uh, now, full disclosure, Retro Modding did provide both of these for me, uh, even though they don't sell this one. They went out and bought it and sent it to me anyway. Uh, but I wanted to test these and see if we can't prove that propaganda article wrong or prove it right or, you know, even just see which one of these is the better mod. Now, generally, I've been a big fan of just using rechargeable double A's in Game Boy Advance consoles, but um, I understand the appeal of having a charge port. I understand the appeal of just having a lithium ion battery mod, but I've tested this before and I've found that for maximum playtime, the best results are almost always a couple of these bad boys. Now, let's talk about price, all right? Um, I'm not going to go too deep into the specs on these, but for these particular ones, the Ikea Lottas that I generally recommend, four pack of these is seven bucks. Still need a charger, but, you know, chargers are pretty cheap. I spent 15 bucks on my charger. Uh, there are cheaper ones. So, what, $22 gets you two packs or two sets of batteries and you can just swap them out as you charge them. Um, anyway. That's besides the point. The uh, retro modding battery pack, or let's talk about Retro 6 first. The new version of this battery pack is $39.99 USD at this moment. Um, the one listed is the V1.1 version, which has the, they, they finally added the uh, low power, low battery indicator. I believe this is the V1.0, but I'm actually not 100% sure because neither is marked. Um, so I guess we'll find out later and the uh, Retro modding battery is the same price at $39.99. So Already you can get quite a few more packs of Ikea Lottas if you want compared to some of these, but You know, maybe that's not your jam. Maybe you want one of these. So let's go ahead and see what you get with your uh, With your 40 bucks So, this is the retro modding one. These batteries come from the, uh, or these battery packs, I guess, come from the vendor with the battery cell already attached to this motherboard. Now, I suspect this is just double-sided tape down, so if you really wanted to, you could try scraping that off. And long-term, that's probably what you'll have to do because these batteries aren't indefinite. They will go bad eventually. Um, unfortunately, that's just how it is, you know, five, ten years down the line. Um, and if you still have this, you might want to replace the battery. However, chances are pretty good this is a standard size cell, so you can probably replace it relatively easily. I bet if I were to peel this off, which I'm not going to do in the off chance I ruin it, because 
can't always do that with batteries. But I bet if you peel this off, you'll find um, some numbers under there, some, something like this, 10, 30, 40, which is the standard battery size, and then you could order one of these. This is not the same battery, but maybe this one is. Nope. The one they have included is actually a little bit bigger. So that is actually one of the things I want to test. Per the specs on this thing, they say they include a 1,400 milliamp hour battery, which that's what this is. It's not the same size cell. Um, the retro modding one is a hair bigger, but I tested this battery. This battery tested at over 1,600 milliamp hours. So, you know, it's not always about what is written on the battery. It depends entirely on the quality of the cell, I guess. Um, but you know, this could be a one-off. Maybe, maybe not. I do. I did get end up getting two of these, and they both tested. Uh, the other one was like 1570 or something, so it was a little bit lower, but still well over the rated capacity. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the. Oh dear, power just went out, but it came back. I'm sure that was wonderful for my computer. Sorry, distracted. Um, God, that's been happening a lot lately. Anyway, Retro 6 battery. The battery comes separate from the PCB. Um, all of my notes are gone. That's nice. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I'll just wing it. It'll be good. Um, it does come with double-sided tape on both sides. So if you are to believe their claims... Ooh, that's not the page. So if we go back to the Handheld Legends blog post slash propaganda, if we take a look at here, one of their claims that the battery is indeed replaceable compared to funny pl or retro moddings, which is not replaceable. I mean, if you use this tape, it might as well not be replaceable, but I suppose that is optional. And if we peel this back, you can see that it is also a standard cell 103048 rated at 1,700 milliamp hours. Uh, the brand on this one is Tewey Cell, T-E-W-A-Y-C-E-L. Uh, but this is a 103048, which, interestingly, is the same size I have here, rated at 1,455 milliamp hours. Uh, the battery itself does look a hair bigger, um, retro sixes anyway. But they're probably basically the same thing. On that note, this actually looks to be pretty close in size. Oh no, it is thicker. Let me grab my calipers here. Now it's gonna be hard because there's PCB on this one, but I'll measure the PCB, just one millimeter, zero that out, and then measure the battery. It's about nine millimeters thick, whereas this one with the double-sided tape Granted, it's 10 millimeters, um, but I don't think the double-sided tape is taking up a millimeter. I'd say it's more like 0.3 millimeters. But anyway, yeah, so this battery is a little bit thicker, so assuming the numbers are accurate and assuming, you know, the extra volume means extra capacity, then yeah, the Retro 6 battery is probably going to last longer. So let's take a look at the PCB here. This comes like this, and your two go ahead and attach that this way. And then, presumably, you'd want to go ahead and stick that down, but uh, oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Let's go for it. What's the worst that could possibly happen? You know what? Just in case. There, now we know everything is nice and lined up. Okay. Okay. All right, there we go. Now neither of them are replaceable. 
but that's okay. So before I get into doing any numbers tests, uh, because this one does have a plug on it, I did already, I did already open up the battery and take a look at it. Um, and I did go ahead and make myself a battery plug adapter for my charger so that I can test the capacity on this thing because I literally had the correct connectors on my desk after doing this video. Um, but yeah, I got an adapter for this one. This one I am going to have to desolder and make my own adapter with the plug that I have. Here it is. With this plug, just so I can plug it straight into my battery. I'm going to desolder the battery from the PCB and make sure that there's, um, you know, make sure there's no like weird parasitic drain from the PCB or something like that, just so that I'm testing both of these as similarly as possible. Um, but before I do the runtime tests or the capacity tests, let's do some charge tests. So one of these batteries, I don't remember which, and I'm not going to bother checking again because it shouldn't matter. Allegedly, one of these does not support USB-C host charging. So that's what we'll test with this power supply here. This is a USB-C PD, alphabet soup, uh, charger here. And at five volts, which is what this, which is what both of these are going to charge at, this will put out three amps. Now this does put out a myriad of other voltages, but unless the device specifically requests those voltages, which I think neither of these are designed to do, it won't request those voltages. Um, so if it were to go up to 20 volts, it could request, or it could charge up to 2.25 amps, which is like, 45 watts, that's what this charger is, this is a 45 watt charger. Uh, but since it's only gonna be charging at five volts, it's going only going to be pulling a maximum of 15 watts, which is what I believe both of these say they support. We'll find out. Um, if it doesn't work on USB-C, I also have a standard USB-A charger. This is just an old charger that came with one of the tablets I picked up a long time ago. But as we can see here, it supports five volts at two amps. Uh, in the off chance this thing doesn't work, I have a, an old iPad charger. Um, legit, not bootleg or aftermarket or anything. This is actually from Apple. Uh, this is one of the 10 watt chargers and it puts out 5.1 volts at 2.1 amps. So technically this should charge faster than this one, but we'll see I'll use whichever one works better. Uh, but at this point, I do need to pause for a moment so I can go under my desk and plug these in. All right, so we're going to start with the USB-C charger. And as you can see, I have it plugged into my meter here. It's charging my switch just fine. Um, my switch is already fully charged. Let me kill these lights so you can see that dark screen a little bit better. Um, but yeah, as you can see, my switch is already fully charged, so it's not pulling that much, but you can see it is pulling up to 15 volts. Uh, so let me unplug that. And let's try out the Retro 6 battery. That is insanely bright. Both those lights means it's charging and it has successfully negotiated 5 volts. So it should charge just fine off of any USB-C host device. God, that is so bright. Okay. That genuinely hurts my eyes without my thumb over it. Um, interesting note, this charger does support a maximum of three amps at five volts. I noticed this is not charging at that. I don't know if we need a special charger for that, but yeah. Anyway, let's check out the retro modding one. And that one appears to have negotiated five volts as well. So let me just pull up this table again. If we go in here, compatibility, only some USB-C listed for the retro modding um, charger. I don't, I don't see where they got that information because it appears charges just fine off of my USB-C power supply. Uh, so let's test out my 5 volt power supply, which is a lower uh, amperage, but neither of these were pulling the max. Now, granted, 
these batteries are probably not fully depleted. They're probably in a storage charge, which is about 3.7 volts, so about half charged. Uh, but let's test out my 5 volt, 2 amp uh, supply here. I'm using a different meter here because this is USB A. Um, but this USB tester does have a much higher resolution. So whereas the USB-C one only goes to, uh, what is it, hundredths, this one goes all the way out to thousandths. So we can get a much finer resolution and see what it is exactly it's charging at. So on the retro modding supply, it looks like it's fully charged. So we're not going to get any useful information on that. That's okay. We can do more testing later. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Like I said, maybe maybe there's a problem with my charger. Let me let me pause real quick and I'm going to switch to my other supply. Um, not 100% sure which one it's plugged into, but we'll find out in just a sec. Okay, so this was plugged into the HP supply, now it's plugged into the Apple one. Let's just double check. Oh, now it appears to be charging. That's interesting. So maybe there was just a problem with my HP supply. Okay, I think it's a little bit interesting that both of these battery packs are um, more sensitive to USB-A power supplies as opposed to USB-C power supplies, but that's that's besides the point, I suppose. So this is charging. Oh, I guess it's done charging. Yeah. And just to make sure it is reversible. Yep. Probably should have tested that with the other one. Oh, this one won't charge either. What is up with that? Let me plug this directly into a USB port on my computer. <sighs> Try that. That appears to be charging. All right, so that's annoying. Um, now that it's plugged into a USB port on my computer, I have a maximum power supply of, what, five volts, 500 milliamps, so two and a half watts. So I can't use my 10 watt charger on this. I can only use my two and a half watt charger. Let's try a USB 3.0 port, even though it's only a 2.0 cable. Shouldn't matter. Yeah, same thing. All right, let's double check and see that the retro modding battery still charges. And indeed it does. So just to rule out some compatibility here, I'm going to unplug the meter. Just plug this directly in. And Okay, so the clean juice just doesn't like this meter at all. Okay, that makes more sense. Let's try one last thing. We're going to try my USB-C meter, because that one seemed to work just fine. And we've got the same thing that I was seeing before. Even though it's plugged into a 2 amp supply, it is only pulling 0.3 amps. which is more than the retro modding one, but this one, I believe, is just about at max charge. So I'm gonna have to run both of these down and find out what they actually pull. Shame it doesn't work with my more accurate meter, but that's okay. Do some quick tests here. Throw that on voltage. And we can see that the retro modding one, or excuse me, the retro six um, adapter here, uh, power supply, battery pack, whatever the heck you want to call it, 
It's putting out 3.4 volts, which is perfectly fine for a Game Boy Advance. Uh, under load, I suspect that'll go down a little bit, but probably not much. And the battery itself is very nearly fully charged at 4.14 volts. The retro modding one, however, should be putting out nothing, and indeed it is because this one has a switch on it right here. We'll go ahead and switch it on. You would want to switch it off for storage, or in this case, shipping. And you can see it's putting out a little bit of a lower voltage at 2.97 volts. Uh, that's probably better for the Game Boy Advance because these were designed for um, AA batteries, which two alkalines in series are only going to put out three volts anyway. But Game Boy Advance consoles do work at a max of um, 3.84 volts, I believe. And let's see what this battery pack is at. I'm going to have to pick some of this. Oh, this is not going to come off easily, is it? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this, I believe this is just like liquid electrical tape or something. Let's see what this battery is at. It should be mostly charged. Yeah, 4.11 volts. So th it's almost fully charged as well. Uh, interesting note that this is a battery connector footprint on this board. So if you really wanted to, you could just desolder these, put a battery connector on there, and then ta-da, it's now as replaceable as the Retro 6 one. Um, but yeah, I think that's just about all the testing I can do now. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and desolder this one and pop a battery connector on this battery so I can do some capacity testing on both of these. Uh, and then as soon as I get the capacity tested on both of these, I'm going to do some rundown tests. Now, the rundown console that I'm going to be using is this Game Boy Advance that I modded with a funny playing IPS kit. Um, long time ago. This is the Funny Playing V2 kit. There are zero other mods, so we should, in theory, get more than 14 hours with this battery pack and more than 10 hours with this battery pack. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to take a long time to test, but I want to give these things the benefit of the doubt, and I'm testing with a Funny Playing Kit in particular and not a one-chip kit because I know the Funny Playing Kits get better battery life. Uh, also, I'm going to test both of these on the exact same Game Boy. That way we can rule out any weird like power usage type thing. Uh, originally, I was going to run both of these two head-to-head, -head, but quite frankly, one of them just gets a lot better battery life than the other, and that's just the way it is, despite the fact that they have the same kit in them. That's just Game Boy Advances for you. Um, some units are more power efficient than others, so we'll just use the same one for both boards. Now, I did already go ahead and swap out the rear panel on this Game Boy Advance with the Retro 6 IPS Ready shell ha rear housing um, for one reason and one reason only. Both of these battery mods require that you cut out uh, parts of the battery compartment like this tab here and this tab. This is a legitimate limited edition that I have already cut up quite, <laughs> quite a bit, but I don't want to do any more cutting on this. So I just swapped the rear housing so that I wouldn't have to do that. Uh, but either of these should drop right in just like that. Power the console. There we go. I was just trying not to bend any of these things unnecessarily, but it was easier to get the uh, Retro 6 one in. All right, and then that goes in there, and that'll power it just fine. 
Uh, if you were to switch this off for like storage mode, which I can't quite reach in there, the console won't power up anymore. I've got to switch it back on. Jeez. The tool I use to turn it off can't be used to turn it on because it doesn't fit. I don't want to grab something metal and stick it in there, but there we go. For what it's worth though, if you are genuinely not going to use any of these for a long time, just remove it from the console entirely. Don't just don't just switch it off and call it a day. Both of these mods, or even if you're any batteries, it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do some capacity tests, some charge tests. I am going to charge how charge. I'm going to time how long both of these take to charge so we can compare those figures as well. Um, and then we'll do some runtime tests to see if the capacity has any meaningful impact on runtime. Um, and I'll be back with those results. All right, so I think I'm finished with all of the testing that I can, I can bear to do. Got the results. These three battery mods, quote unquote, in the uh, terms of the lower ones here. Um, which which one? Which which one do we go with? Which what is the best buy? Well, surprising no one, the uh, four pack seven dollar IKEA Lottas still offer the most runtime. I, I I called it. I mean, but. I will say the results are significantly closer than I had expected. Before we go over the results, let's uh, let's look at something again. So I've still got my phone here. I've still got that blog post from Handheld Legend. I just want to discuss the numbers that they quote. All right. So they say, let me uh, turn off autofocus or turn on rather. Uh, they say that their battery offers 1700 milliamp hours over retro moddings which is only 1400 milliamp hours all right okay that's fine the battery itself i i did show that it is labeled 1700 milliamp hours and i did end up taking this thing apart accidentally um sorry have these have these mixed up in my head this one i ended up taking apart it does show 1400 milliamp hours um, I forget the brand of the cell, but I'll just, I'll throw a picture up on the screen and you can take a look at it yourself. Um, it does show that capacity. Same thing with this one, the Toei cell, 1700 milliamp hours. They're just going by what the manufacturer tells them, not by the actual capacity of the battery. Had they actually tested, had Retro 6 actually tested their battery, they would know maybe that capacity doesn't quite make sense. Retromodding tells me that they have actually tested their battery, which is why they sent both of these to me to, to take a look at, because they know that Retro 6 and Handheld Legend are totally full of shit. But let's just look at the capacity test. I ran both batteries connected straight to my charger, bypassing all of the circuitry here. Retromodding battery tested at, what is that? 1600 milliamp hours. Well, that's strange. Handheld Legend says it should only be 1400. What's the Retro 6 battery test at? 1583. What's that? The Retro modding battery has higher capacity, even though the cell is physically smaller. Gee, if only we had someone making videos on subjects such as this, where they discuss how the capacity printed on the battery has absolutely nothing to do with the capacity of the actual cell when you measure it. Interesting how that works. Um, so yeah, I tested the capacity. I ran a few different tests at different um, charge levels and discharge levels, so 300 milliamps, 500 milliamps. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all this shows is that the batteries themselves are basically the same capacity and any difference is you know down, down to margin of error basically so that being said both of these batteries have the exact same capacity or at least 
close enough that it doesn't really make any appreciable difference. So let's take a look at Handheld Legends blog post again. 1700 versus 1400. That's total bullshit. Battery type, replaceable versus non-replaceable. All right, there, there should be a big ol' asterisk there because both of these batteries are held to the PCB with um, permanent adhesive tape. All right, granted, you do not have to use it on this one, but once you do, there's, you know, th there's no separating that. This is not going to come off without damaging the PCB. Look at how much that's flexing just by trying to pull the battery off. Heat'll help, I'm sure, but this this is no more replaceable than this is. All right, you could argue, hey, maybe the battery connector is what they're talking about. All right, this, while this is a standard connector, it is a uncommon connector. If you get a battery in this size, chances are pretty darn good you're going to get a bare lead one without the connector, so you're going to have to solder on your own battery connector anyway. All right? If that's the only difference between the two, you have to solder for both battery mods. So I don't see how one is replaceable and the other is replaceable, not replaceable. All right, let's look at uh, playtime. Estimated playtime, 14 hours for the handheld legend slash retro six clean juice, quote unquote, versus 10 hours for the retro modding GBA battery mod. All right, we've already discussed that the battery capacities of these two cells are basically the same. So how could this get so much more runtime than this? Well, the answer is simple. It doesn't. Let's look at the runtime test. With the retro modding cell, on average, the low power light seems to come on at about nine hours, 15, nine hours, 10, into run. The battery itself just completely dies at nine and a half hours. So you have anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes of warning for the low before it just shuts off, you know? Not quite 10 hours, but close enough that I'd say it doesn't really matter because not everyone is playing the same game. The runtime will be different per console and per game. All right, I've, I've made videos on this before. Um, different consoles just more power efficient. Um, different games just take different amounts of power. That's why I always try and test with the exact same physical game cartridge as well when I'm doing my um, backlight mods. Let's look at the Retro 6 one. All right, You get 10 hours and 8 minutes. 9 hours, 48 minutes. 10 hours and 3 minutes. So, yes, I guess you do get about an extra half an hour out of the thing. Um, it's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. Yes, it does last longer, but 10 hours is not the 14 hours that they promised. Nine and a half hours is not the 10 hours that retro modding promised either, but I'd say the variance of 30 minutes is uh, much closer than the variance of four hours. So, you know, take that as you will. Uh, one thing worth noting, this is a modified part, all right? The original one that I got was a V1.0 that does not have a low power warning. So as soon as you hit 10 hours, that's it. You're done, it's, it's, just, it's just off. There's no warning, it just, it's done. I did, uh, after testing, I did decide, you know what, let's test the new version, the 1.1 version, and uh, add on this low power module and see how that affects it. Well, the runtime didn't change much. Um, still got 10 hours, 14 minutes, 10 hours, three minutes, nine hours, 55. But we did still have approximately 30 minutes of uh, low power warning. So that was, that was pretty nice. I think that is a necessary add-on. If you have the 1.0 version, highly recommend get, getting this, um, this low power warning module. The actual soldering itself, I did have some trouble with because you're soldering to these big pads. As soon as you heat this up, this battery contact just wants to fuck off on you. Um, so if you can work around that, as long as you can settle with not having the prettiest solder joints, then you'll be fine. Um, but it is, it's, 
It's not the easiest to install because you are soldering directly to capacitors. This thing was not meant to be modified or there would be pads to solder to and you wouldn't just be soldering to existing components and pads. But anyway, so yeah, that's uh, that's playtime, all right? We are zero for three so far on Handheld Legends blog post. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charge time now. So I tested two things. I tested the charge time and the charge rate. You can see, if we just look at the charge time, these two here, the charge time of the retro modding battery mod, it took almost four hours to charge from empty to full. Retro 6 took half the time. So that's close, I guess, but they're both completely wrong. Um, two and a half hours is not almost four hours. Uh, one hour is not almost two hours. Uh, I did also rerun these tests once I added on this module to see if it affected it. Didn't affect the charge time whatsoever. Let's take a look at the charge rate. This is probably what explains the charge time. Now the charge rate for the retro modding battery, it started off at 500 milliamps and that's, uh, that's the meter that I was testing. I tested it on multiple different power supplies. I couldn't get it to go over that or under that. It always just seemed to charge at the same rate. Good news, 500 milliamps is pretty much standard. So anything with anything made from, uh, what, 2002 and onward that has a USB port, you plug this in, it'll charge at the full rate. Uh, as long as it is actually USB standard, at least. Uh, USB 2.0 introduced a 500 milliamp hour power supply per USB port. Milli, milliamp, excuse me, not milliamp hour, that makes zero sense. Uh, 500 milliamp power supply. So, as long as your device is compliant, you plug your, your uh, USB-A to USB-C cable in, it'll charge just fine. The Retro 6 one, on the other hand, charges at one amp, or 1,028 milliamps. Um, didn't really change once I added on the module. Yes, I'm showing five milliamps higher, but I would call that margin of error there. Um, one amp charging, it's its both a good and a bad thing, all right? It's a good thing in that it means your battery will charge significantly faster, or in this particular case, at exactly twice the rate as this mod. Um, however, you're probably looking at it, you know, thinking, hey, my phone charges at like 15 watts or whatever bullshit. And yes, you can implement faster battery charging, that is fine. The faster you charge the battery, the more wear it causes on the cell. So if you're always charging at the maximum rate, after, I don't know, a few months to a year, depending on how much you charge, for a Game Boy Advance, that's probably going to be significantly less than like a smartphone. Um, you will notice a significant decline in capacity. Trickle charging, these lithium ion batteries have always responded better to charging as slowly as possible. Um, within reason, of course. I mean, you, you feed it one milliamp, it's probably going to self-discharge faster than it actually charges. But you get what I'm saying. The lower charge rate is ultimately better for the long-term life of the cell. I don't think one amp is high enough that it actually makes a difference, but who knows, long-term, maybe this cell just has lower capacity than this cell. You know, if I revisit this a few months down the line, maybe a year down the line, the results could be completely different. Uh, granted, that's not going to be an entirely fair test because I'm probably not going to regularly use either of these, but for, for reasons I'll get into later. Um, but another thing, the uh, cell that the Retro 6 mod uses, you know, it's, it's marked at much higher capacity than it actually tests that. So this battery itself, charging aside, if I were to swap these two cells, the two-way cell in the Retro 6 mod just might not last as long. It just might have a lower shelf life than the battery in here that I'm 
totally forgetting the brand again. Um, it's, that's just how it is. It's, it's a lower quality battery. It might not last as long. Uh, but it, it's hard to say, especially with my sample sizes of one, but that's, that's just my guess. That's an educated guess based on what I know of these things. So let's look at some of the last bits of data that I gathered before moving on. I did also test the charge rate of the batteries while powered on, and uh, I found some interesting things. So if you have both of these mods support play and charge, so if you have your Game Boy on, you notice the low power light comes on, you have about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on battery mod, uh, 15 to a half an hour, I guess, uh, to plug it in and, you know, save your progress, I guess. Um, half an hour, 15 minutes, that's plenty of time to save your progress and shut the damn thing down. But let's say you're in the middle of a match in some game that doesn't let you save until after the match or something. I don't know, whatever it is. Both of these you can plug in while you're still playing. Um, if you're doing that, you're going to need a battery cover that has a USB-C hole in it, which I did not have until I made one for the purposes of, of testing. The retro modding battery does actually charge at a higher rate. So it charges at the standard 500 plus whatever current you need to actually run the console. Uh, the retro six battery charges at the exact same rate so that the charge time itself is the exact same between the retro modding battery, whether it's on or off, but the charge time for the retro six battery is significantly longer when you have it plugged in and charging. All right, so interesting data. Um, before I transition to my next section, I just want to mention one last note on this chart here. Compatibility. All USB-C, even C to C compatibility, only some USB-C. So Handheld Legend is saying the retro modding GBA battery only works with some USB-C chargers, uh, whereas the Retro 6 one should work with any USB-C charger. Now, I don't know if you guys remember all of 20 minutes ago, but when I plugged both of these into my USB-C chargers, which which one was the one that was actually having issues? Uh, hmm. I don't know. I'll have to go review the footage on that one. But issues aside, both of these battery mods work with all USB-C to C chargers that I was able to test. I'm not saying they work with every charger. I'm sure there is a charger that only works on this mod uh, or only works on this mod. It's just some weird quirk because it's not standard. I'm sure that exists. All the chargers I used, including my Nintendo Switch charger, not Nintendo OEM, it's ZDI or PDI or whatever it is, um, worked on both of these. Now, I did have issues with this on my USB-A chargers. I have absolutely no idea what that was. I'm going to rule it out as a fluke because it worked perfectly fine later. Um, if anything, I think maybe that brownout I had while I was filming earlier affected my USB-A chargers, or there was still something weird going on with my uh, AC electricity, and this charged fine later. So I, I'll call that a fluke, but at the same time, I will say, even while I was having the issue, this one still seemed to charge fine. That's neither here nor there, though. So, this blog post, all of this is pure bullshit. I mean, I, I feel so much better, but at the same time, I really don't. When I was first reading through this, it just, like I said, it rubbed me the wrong way. All of this information just seemed off. It seemed wrong. Uh, and now that I have both of these and have tested both of these, I can say without a doubt that it is definitely wrong. Uh, now, I would like to address a couple things. Um, I thought I had this page cached, but I guess not. Uh, I want to address the charge time. Two and a half hours on retro modding. I I didn't get that. I got four hours. I don't know. I don't know where this two and a half hours is coming from. Um, but other than that, everything on retro modding's own page is accurate. Uh, up to ten hours on a fully modified console at maximum brightness with an amplifier at max volume. Um, I wasn't testing at maximum brightness. I was testing at the default brightness. 
Uh, so that that seems a little misleading. But again, like I said, some consoles do use different amounts of power, so that's why I tested both of these with the same same uh, same console. Um, all this to say, don't just believe all these numbers that these vendors give you. It's not all right. All right, that's enough data. Let's uh, let's put this junk away. Let's talk about let's talk about the actual battery mods themselves. So, both vendors have a set of instructions for using these because if you're using them with a stock Game Boy, let me peel this off here. You do have to remove this tab. You might have to modify this tab. You have to remove this tab just to get these to fit. Now. I chose not to do that because these IPS ready housings here already have these tabs completely cleared out. Now during most of the testing I was actually using the Retro 6 shell but I ended up taking this Game Boy apart after my testing and uh, I, I needed access to the IPS kit installed in here. And when I put it back together, I just used the retro mod, or the funny playing shell just to uh, just to prove a point that I stressed earlier. In that the plastics are all interchangeable. Doesn't you can you you can mix and match if you want. But anyway, I chose to use these shells because they're pre-modified. I didn't want to cut up my console anymore. Um, my shells are not I, um, USB C ready or however they're worded. So I had to cut a hole in this other shell that I have. Now there's a piece of tape on here because the battery latch is broken. It started broken, I glued it back together and then I snapped it in and then both the tabs broke off. So that was pretty much useless. But the reason I'm discussing that is because the Retro 6 battery, if we pop this in here, notice it just pops out on its own. I was testing and I found that out and I was kind of upset because you can't just put on your other battery cover. It doesn't fit. You would need that cutout for USB-C if you're using this battery mod. That seems like such, such an oversight. I mean, granted, having to remove the battery cover to charge is less than ideal. Not everyone wants a charge port visible in the bottom of their console. So that's why I set out to make this so I could literally hold the battery in for testing. All right. It, uh, I managed to get this whole cut in just about the right place without too much overshoot, but I mean, it's, come on. All right, but yeah, admittedly, it does work nicely. Um, I didn't like that. One of the nice things about the retro modding Bateria. Pop this out. This one just so happens to fit with a uh, OEM battery cover. Unfortunately, my battery tab has just come out and now I can't put that in. That's nice. Okay, let's try that again. Look at that. Fits nicely. No unsightly charge port hole, etc. If you want to use the Retro 6 battery cover, USB-C ready one, you might find a problem with that though, unfortunately. The hole is not in the same spot. Um, I don't know which one is not centered. I don't really care that much, but the retro modding one is significantly lower. Now, this does relate to a topic I was gonna touch on later, but I might as well mention it now. Retro modding has told me that they are revising this battery mod and um, shipping it with higher capacity batteries in the future. I don't know what that means. Or rather, I don't have the details to share what that means. Um, what I know is that they're putting thicker batteries on there because they know they can fit a thicker battery. Thicker usually means more capacity and assuming retro modding goes with their um, high quality vendor again, they probably won't have any issues with that, but I don't know what the actual capacity is going to be. I don't know the time frame on that, but it is what it is. Anyway, 
Um, so yeah, that was that was an annoying quirk. I didn't like having to cut this. Um, I thought that was kind of frustrating. I like having options. I like being able to use it if I want to, or not use it if I don't want to. In this case, I didn't want to use it, but I had to. Uh, but that's not to say that the Retro 6 battery was the only one with quirks. You've seen me shoving this in and out of here, how I have, uh, how it's just, it's more difficult. Like it goes in pretty easily, but as far as coming out goes, you hear something just snaps into place and it doesn't come out easily. You can pry it out pretty easily, but Retro Modding's own instructions tell you you need to remove this battery tab. I like to think I just proved that wrong by saying you don't need to remove it, but I had problems by not removing it. Uh, it does end up interfering with this side of the battery, mostly because this board sticks up. It wedges right in between the battery and the board, and this spring just presses on it constantly. You are supposed to remove this with the retro modding battery. You do not have to remove it with the Retro 6 battery. I think the reason for that is entirely this square of PCB that's missing. Um, if retro modding is able to, I would like to see a similar function added to this mod. I think being able to swap seamlessly between regular batteries and a battery mod without having to remove that tab would be a, would be a good thing. Um, so, let's see, I think that was pretty much all the quirks I had. I mean, they both, they both do exactly what they set out to do, they just, you know, may have embellished their numbers quite a bit. Um, would I recommend either of these mods? I mean, it's, it's tough. I fully understand the appeal of being able to charge and play at the same time. That is something that you cannot accomplish with nickel metal hydride batteries. It just, it does not work. There are not chargers that allow you to do that. You can install an internal charge mod, which I have done, and it does work pretty decently, but you cannot play and charge at the same time. With these, you can. Um, I also understand the appeal of having literally one cable that charges your Game Boy and charges your phone. You only need to carry one charger. Um, now, if you're at home, that doesn't matter so much, but if you're, you know, traveling, which is something that people used to do before global pandemics and probably continue to do after, um, it, it's nice just having, not having to carry an extra charger. Now, sure, you can argue with these batteries, you just carry an extra set of batteries and then pop these on the charger when you're done, uh, you know, swap them out. And I will admit, $7 gets you. Thought I had them, thought I had them, there they are. Two sets of batteries that you can use with your Game Boy Advance. Use this one, runs for about 10 hours. Swap them out, put that one in. No recharging required on your Game Boy side. You're good to go. It does require power cycling the console and then you have to go put these on a charger. These take longer to charge than both of these. These take like six hours to fully charge. Um, so, Yes, there are trade-offs for every single, um, every single one, no matter what you want to do. Uh, but if you're after just maximum runtime, let's scroll back here. Let's take a look at my Lottos here. All right, low power light came on at nine hours, nine minutes. But the console died at 10 hours, 37 minutes. All right, 10 hour one low power, 10 hour 52 dead. 936 low power, 1041 dead. All right, every single runtime test, my Lada's lasted longer than both the retro modding batteries and the retro six batteries. Every single test. My highest retro six was 10 hours, 14 minutes. My lowest Lada was 10 hours, 37 minutes. Minimum half an hour longer, all right? Every single test, these lasted longer and there were seven dollars for two sets. Not counting a charger, which is probably another 15 bucks or so, but these are both 40 dollar 
battery packs. All right, it's still cheaper at $22 to get two sets of these and a charger than to get one of these. So, would I recommend it? Gosh, that was an awful tangent, wasn't it? Um, if this is what you want, yeah, sure. They're, they're both pretty decent. I highly recommend the Retro Modding one over the Retro 6 one, just because with the Retro 6 one, they're lying about all that stuff. Uh, they're part, even if Retro 6 isn't lying, they're partnering with someone who is lying, and that's just, that's not a business practice that we should continue supporting, all right? They're lying about their own mod, and they're lying about Retro Modding's mod to make it look better. And if that's not good enough, let's, uh, we're, we're, we're basically done here. I, I, I want to go on a, I want to go on a tangent. Um, let's get some, let's get some notepads. Sorry for people who are just not math people, I guess. Um, sorry. <laughs> but we're gonna, we're gonna talk about some math here because I think this is incredibly interesting. So if we go back to the clean juice page, which also wasn't cached, sorry about that, uh, on Handheld Legends, Handheld Legends site, we can see, per the description, they talk about watts of power, all right? Now, I know that this specific verbiage comes from Retro 6 and is not from Handheld Legend because I saw this specific verbiage on Retro 6's Instagram very long time ago, before Handheld Legend had this stuff. So let's let's talk about a few things, all right? I know a lot of you like to measure battery capacity in milliamp hours, so my law does measure at 2,450 milliamp hours. Um, this HHS cell measures at 850 milliamp hours. It's, it's an easy to digest number. You can measure power consumption. So something, for example, that's running at 100, ooh, let's uh, try writing normally. Something that's running at 100 milliamps with an 800 milliamp hour battery can be assumed to last eight hours because that's how math works. You cancel out the milliamps. Um, this should be long division, but cancel out the milliamps and then we divide 800 by 100, you get eight hours. Easy peasy, right? All right, um, but let's talk about voltage too, because the voltage changes the, uh, I don't wanna say efficiency because that's not the right word, but for ease of explanation, it changes the efficiency at which the console runs. These are 1.2 volts, 2,450 milliamp hours at 1.2 volts. This is 850 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts, significantly higher. This is why watts, for example, is a much better power measurement. Watts equals voltage times amps. Right, sorry, I was writing off screen. Pretty easy formula. Um, if you've taken physics, you probably know that. Easy enough. So let's take a look at, and I'm going to get a calculator because basic arithmetic is not my strong suit, especially when I'm filming. We'll just take this at its, at its, uh, at its, at its wording. Um, 850 milliamp. We we calculate watts with amps, not with milliamps. So this is point, this is 0 0.85 amps. We will multiply this by 3.7 volts. So 0.85 times 3.7. We get 3.145 watts. Easy peasy, right? Let's do the lot of now. That is 2450, so 2.45 amps 
times 1.2 volts. For rechargeable batteries, we use the nominal voltage. That is 2.94 watts. So I hope you see the point I was trying to make, right? This is a much smaller number, but this is lower capacity, despite the much, much larger number. Now, granted this is for a Game Boy Advance SP, and this would be for a Game Boy Advance, so it's not, not quite a fair comparison, uh, but don't forget a Game Boy Advance uses two of these, so we can, uh, we can assume to double that at 5.88 watts. Now, those of you paying attention, those of you who are really familiar with math, probably noticed a mistake I made. And I made this mistake on purpose. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> um, this is wattage. This is a measure this is a measure of power usage. That measurement doesn't make sense when it comes to batteries because batteries have potential capacity or potential usage. Um, you measure a battery capacity in terms of how long it lasts over time. 3.145 watts does not give that whole story. It tells you, well, actually it, it doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't make sense in terms of battery um, capacity. So let's refer back to the original measurement. This is 850 milliamp hours. Notice I dropped the H. Let's go ahead and add that back in. As far as milliamps, all I did was move the decimal to get rid of the M. All right, once we add the H back in, we can see, you know, the, the math doesn't really change. It's still 0.85 times 3.7. We get 3.145 watt hours. That is a much different measurement. Um, this actually makes more sense in terms of battery capacity. So a battery with 3.145 watt hours can support a, in theory, of course it does depend on the specific battery itself if it can even support that high current draw at once, but assuming we have a perfect battery, this means a battery can last one hour powering something that pulls 3.145 watts. Or it can last two hours powering something that pulls 1.6 watt hours, or watts, excuse me. Or it can last half an hour powering something that pulls six watts. I hope that makes sense, all right? This Pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, as as far as as far as this whole topic goes, it's it's a pretty simple thing. So let's, of course, refer back to let's refer back to Retro Six's uh, blurb here. Adds six point three watts of power. All right. We just went over this. Watts doesn't make sense. The correct measurement should be watt hours. All right. Now let's also take a look very carefully at the next part because I think that part, the next part is more important. The math is identical whether you use watts or watt hours, so it's just a simple matter of correcting watts to watt hours. But let's take a look at this, right? Compared to two watt for the largest AA batteries available. We just did that math. My batteries, a single battery, is 2.94 watts hours. I'm going to write that down. But Game Boy Advance uses two of them. So we have to compare two batteries, don't we? Not just one? So how is this three times the game time, but the math, the math doesn't make sense. All right, let's... uh. Do one more page. We know Retro 6's battery is 1.7 amp hours at 
nominal volts. Oh. Should turn off rotation. 3.7 times 1.7. That gives us 6.29. 0.29 watt hours. So we can power a device assuming we have a battery with the specs that Retro 6 tells us. We can power a device for longer on their battery because it is 6.29 watt hours versus 5.88. Larger the number, longer it runs for. It's just that simple. However, let's, uh, let's change this math to what I actually measured, shall we? If we refer back to my capacity here, I test the Retro 6 battery at 1583, 1569, 1550, 1569. Let's call it 1600 just to both make the math easier and give it a better fighting chance. 1600, just a little bit lower. 3.7 volts equals 0.6 times 3.7, 5.92. Interesting how that um, 100 milliamps hours made such a difference. Now we're at 5.88 versus 5.92. All right, now, to be completely fair, I should test the actual capacity of these batteries, and um, you'll see in a few minutes here that I I have put them in my charger, and my charger does give me a number, but the number that my charger gives me for nickel metal hydride batteries is not accurate. Uh, when these things are charging, they bleed off extra charge as heat, so you have to you have to take the number that it gives you with a grain of salt because it can only measure the power going in, not the power that the battery takes. Hope, hope that makes sense. But anyway, 5.88 versus 5.92. Well, that doesn't explain why, if we go back to my runtime here, that doesn't explain why my Lada lasted half an hour longer than my Retro 6 battery. All right. One more thing with physics that you need to keep in mind. There is no such thing in consumer electronics as a perfect conductor, all right? You've probably heard of a resistor. Well, what a resistor does is it, it adds, I don't know how to describe the term resistor without using the term resistor <laughs> or resistance. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll link some resources that explain this way better than I can. But long story short, every single operation that a computer does or that these components on here do are wasteful. None of them are 100% efficient. So if we're taking the 3.7 volts that this battery puts out, As we see here, battery is putting out 4.09 volts, but if we plug it into a Game Boy, Game Boy is only seeing 3.4 of those volts. That operation converting 4.09 to 3.4 takes energy. All right, the more components that you have doing that, like there's two discrete components on here. I suspect one of them is for charging and the other is for load switching. And then the actual voltage conversion is handled passively, but don't quote me on that. Every single operation takes energy. So a lot of time when trying to calculate actual runtime from capacity, especially with a battery mod like this, you want to add in a fudge factor. Now I have absolutely no idea what the uh, efficiency of this thing is, but 80% is usually a good number to go by. So let's multiply 5.92 times 80% to get 
to give us our fudge factor. And we get 4.736. Now I'm not going to put a I'm not going to put a um, brain fart. <laughs> not going to put a unit there because that doesn't quite make sense in this context. But I feel that this gives us an accurate number of what the actual battery can run. Now, I need to do this for my LADAs to compare, but I just, I simply do not have a capacity to measure. I can work backwards, however. So if we know that effectively 4.736 watt hours is what this thing gives us and 4.736 watt hours gives us um, about 10 hours we can work backwards from that we take this number 4.736 that gives us 10 hours approximately we want to solve for x, more algebra, but we know that that x gives us 10 hours, we'll call it 40. But we need to convert that to a decimal. 4 out of 6 is, I can't do math, I'm sorry. We'll call that 10.6. All right, and now we just need to solve for x, which is as simple as solving this side, 4.736 divided by 10, multiplied by 10.6. So that gives us an effective 5.02 watt hours. So, again, this, this measurement makes more sense for my LADAs because that is their actual capacity. There's no conversion happening. It doesn't quite make sense for the Retro 6 battery because the battery itself is 5.92 watt hours. We've already proved that with math. But the effective capacity, once you account for all the conversion, it's much lower. So, sorry about that rant, sorry about that tangent. Um, I just wanted to discuss some of the math that uh, Retro 6 is using. Now, if I got anything wrong, and I'm sure I did, um, please, please, please feel free to correct me in the comments. I am not infallible. I have made very many mistakes, and it has been a very long time since I took physics in high school. So, I probably forgot some of that. but. All of that, I just wanted to say, don't believe all the numbers you're given. That is such an easy thing to calculate. So, sorry about that tangent. Um, at this point, I think I'm pretty much done with this video. I've said all that I need to say and then some. Um, so, I guess that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it. Before I finish up, I do want to discuss one more thing, and don't worry. It's not going to be a long tangent, I promise. I've already even filmed this section. So I'll just, I'll give it away and uh, let Other Mako handle this. Thanks for watching, guys. Over to you, Other Mako. Thanks, Other Mako. We're here on site here um, in the other room with my uh, battery charger, where I have the retro modding battery spliced into this battery connector, plugged into channel one here. And the. Uh, Retro 6 battery uh, spliced in my own custom connector. It's the original battery plugged into channel 2 here. And just so you can see, I'm not making this up. Channel 1 battery tested at 1604 milliamp hours. Channel 2 tested at 1569 milliamp hours. This is on normal test mode. This is the end of the test. It took 6 hours 12 minutes. This one took 6 hours and 20 minutes. They're like negligible difference but interesting that the 1400 milliamp hour battery 
is testing higher than the 1700 milliamp hour battery. I don't know what this is going to mean for the runtime. You know, maybe one of these two kits has, um, you know, a significant difference in the efficiency of the voltage regulation. I don't know. Maybe this one's more efficient because it's dropping to only 3.3 or whatever it was instead of the 3.0 volts that this one's doing. Who knows? I just, I just wanted to show because I have a feeling after I present these numbers that people are going to say that there's shenanigans afoot. But here we are. As you can see, this is plugged in right there. Channel 2. Channel 1, these aren't switched internally. Um, if I unplug this, I now no longer have a channel 1, just have channel 2. So, unplug this back in. And now it's redetecting my battery. We'll put it over, run one more test. Uh, let's do 700 milliamps this time. We'll wait for that to lock in. And, you know, just saying, I put these on the charger too. Look at that capacity. I'm thinking, you know, we might have a winner. I haven't actually reviewed the runtime results yet, but I'm pretty sure these are still going to win. Uh, but let's go ahead and run one more test. I should have taken video or should have taken pictures of that so I have reference but I have a video so it's okay but yeah there we go I will um, I don't know I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be the end of the video so thanks for watching guys if you have any questions feel free to hit me up in the comments I'll be sure to put a link to uh, where you can get these things if you want them or these if you want them um, go ahead and check the description and thanks again to retro modding for providing both of these and I hope the results of my tests that I haven't finished yet, that I haven't even started on these two at least. I hope those were, uh, I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.